this talk, actually, I just saw it's supposed to be refactoring tools in Perl, which is, but it's also general, in general about refactoring. Uh, and I'm going to do some theory first. Uh, and then a live demonstration, so don't uh, start applauding when, I'm get, uh, when I get to the last slide. Um, this has nothing to do with the uh, Mojalicious, or I could say it has everything to do with Mo Mojalicious, and then you can all come up with your creative solution to how it, they connect. But actually, there's no, there's no non-blocking code here, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you don't have to know how del what to delay begin does. Um, so, but let's get started. Um, refactoring, what is it? Uh, it's a disciplined technique for restructuring an existing body of code, altering its internal structure without changing its external behavior. So that means uh, the two things that I've marked out here. Um, it's a disciplined technique, so it's a specific set of uh, procedures. Actually, I mean, of course you can do it um, as you, uh, in any way you like, but there is a body of knowledge about ways to do refactoring. Um, and it's about altering its internal structure. So it's about changing the code to become better without changing the external behavior. You might, of course, um, if you refactor, it might happen that uh, performance improves or the opposite, but uh, it's still, it, it, you would still call that refactoring. But you, if you're actually aiming for instance, to improve performance, then it's, uh, it's a different kind of thing. Okay, so this is just, just to show you. This is the beginning of uh, Martin Fowler's refactoring cat catalog. Uh, it's alphabetical, so you can see we get to D here. It's just, for, just, just to illustrate the fact that there are lots of different, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big body of knowledge, as I said. Uh, and uh, the, the goals in the sense of what you're thinking about when refactoring. It's about making the code more readable and comprehensible. In fact, um, J.B. Rainsberger says you should be able to read the code while drunk. I've never tried that. <laughs> I've never tried it myself. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's uh, uh, the other thing is to eliminate, eliminate duplication which you're also always trying to do, and is uh, important, especially since uh, research indicates that the most important uh, factor for maintainability of code is actually the, uh, the volume. The less code, the more maintainable. The less code for the same functionality, the more maintainable it'll be. So this is uh, sort of the last thing. I said was what you're thinking about as you're refactoring. These are some of the benefits. Uh, you, uh, uh, um, lots of time is used reading code. So uh, you might write the code once and read it uh, many, many th times. Many different people might read it. So it's worth doing something to make it more readable. Uh, bugs hide in obscure code, so you Often when you refactor, you'll find that uh, bugs become obvious and duplication makes code rot. I could say a little bit about that. It's actually, if you, if you have several duplicates and, you, and they start to change independently, then you might, uh, you might have the same bug in all of them and you have to change all of them. And then you forgot, forget one of them. And uh, then you have a bug that happens less frequently but might be much harder to, uh, to find. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, I just found this. Uh, you can start out, what I mean by this, start out brain dead, I mean you can start without 
understanding much of the code. And you can do some refactoring and you will understand more uh, as you go along. And one thing that's really useful is if you have some tools to do it. So you, uh, because you can have safer refactoring, you don't break the code so easily. Uh, so the question of tools then, uh, what do we have? Well, in Java, for instance, you have all this stuff. This is Eclipse. Uh, this is uh, an IDE called WebStorm that does uh, refactoring in JavaScript. And uh, in Perl, it's usually like this. It's traditional, at least, it's been like this. Um, you do it manually with your bare hands, as it were. So, uh, but there is some help. I, I searched, uh, there may be more that I'm not, not aware of, but I found uh, BPIX editor tools. Uh, it supports Vim and Emacs, and you have a nice refactoring called rename variable. It's safe in the sense that it respects scope. So if you do, um, if you try to replace uh, or rename a variable using search and replace, you might uh, break break the code because uh, uh, you 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 don't do it uh, correctly. And there's a rename package from Path, which is um, uh, if say if you move a Perl module to a different uh, place uh, in a uh, different path. Uh, you just use this and it'll fix the package statement at the beginning. And there's one called introduce temporary variable. You can take a piece of the code, a small piece, and, and uh, uh, put it into a variable. And, and I did some extra stuff here that I've been playing with. Uh, it's only Vim. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten into ELISP. Uh, so, um, yeah, someone might want to do that. Uh, and the most important one I've done is extract method. This is uh, perhaps the most important refactoring uh, you can do. Uh, and it's, um, but it's pretty complicated to, to um, implement. So I've done some work on it. It's very interesting and challenging. Uh, I also did uh, one to convert a variable to a moose attribute. Uh, it's less finished, less sophisticated. I just uh, I was experimenting with that. Uh, but now um, extract method is especially useful if you have a very long method. Uh, you can take pieces of it and uh, move into separate methods. And you may find, <laughs> or you should be able to make it more readable. Especially, like for instance, you you have a long, you have part of the code that's um, um, that uh, does something that's not uh, very used very much. You can move that out into a method, and it doesn't dominate the whole uh, method. You get isolated testing. You can test uh, the extracted method uh, in isolation, probably. Uh, you, and isolated editing. Uh, if you have a long method, you, you change something at the beginning. And something changes at the end, because you're using the same variables. And it's also about um, if you, they, um, the last point here is about if you uh, one, you, you can improve the readability of the long method by adding comments. And I see a lot of that. Um, but the problem with that sometimes is that the comments get out of sync with the code. So it, uh, the comments become um, sometimes, uh, um, sometimes uh, very, uh, um, um, hard to, uh, uh, more or less useless, I guess. Uh, here's the architecture of what I've done. 
uh, first I analyze the variables which are um, in which the part uh, which variables exist in the par uh, part of the code that you want to extract uh, which exist before and after and which need to be passed into and out of the um, new method and then I have something called a variable sorter that um, finds out which variables what you need to do with the different variables a code generator that generates the new code and a code editor that inserts the um, uh, new code in the correct places this is just I just want to show you this is uh, uh, a little bit of how the analyzer is structured there's a lot of different classes there so the current status of this is that it's mostly safe with normal code. That means the kind of code I've run into. And, but you're gonna, you're gonna find that uh, if you test it on something else, you're gonna find stuff that it doesn't work with. And there are, there are many things that it doesn't handle, like uh, constants, for instance. There are all sorts of things that it needs, that, that needs special handling. And I've only done so much with this. There's no fancy installation available. Uh, there is no CPAN uh, um, upload. Just, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm sure I can learn that. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the readme says how to try it. So it's possible to do that. And uh, this is my, this is me. Uh, two email addresses, and I'm theoretically on Twitter, but uh, I have a serious case of Twitter fatigue, so I haven't done anything there for a long time. Uh, it's, okay, Let, let's do the demonstration. I have a little bit of time for that. This is, this is fun. I like this. It's, um, it's, um, you can play around with the code using this uh, tool and you learn a lot about it. This is from uh, this module, this Perl module is uh, crypt CBC. I don't actually know anything about it. I just picked it out more or less randomly because it had some long methods. And I don't know exactly what it does, but I'm going to see here we have something called Consistency checks, header consistency. Let's just try to see what happens if we extract that into a separate method. I have a, oops, maybe, uh, yeah. Okay, I haven't tried this with the screen, so. So we want to say check header consistency. See what happens. It takes a little bit of time to do that. Yes. So now, you see it's generated call to a new method. Um, one thing it doesn't do is to uh, indent the code. You can see here, um, if you see below the other method, it's generated a new method here. And I'm going to indent that too, so we can see what's happened. Um, and this should work. Uh, there's a slight problem, which is that we can't test it. I run the tests, and uh, they oh, this is the wrong ones, and they pass even if I delete this part of the code. So, but that's, that, that doesn't surprise me because with, if you have this long method, uh, it's hard, it is hard to test. So, so uh, that's, that's one reason why it's useful to have a tool to do this. Because if it can do this, a safe refactoring, then you can, uh, you can start this way. You can add a, a test for this particular method, for instance, which is going to, that's, that's going to be a much easier way to get that um, uh, test that 
part of the code tested when you have it in a separate method. Um, but let me just to show you a little bit more how this can work. Uh, I'm not really pleased with the fact that we have all these, um, these uh, arguments to the method. Um, but it's interesting. We have a legacy hack. Which is, this is one thing that you, now uh, we can, this becomes conspicuous since after I do the uh, um, extract method, we can see that this is uh, something that occurs and that pro occurs before the method. It doesn't hide so much anymore. And there's a, a variable called BS. <laughs> I'm sure you're all thinking about Britney Spears. Um, so what I would want to do, I'm not sure how much I can show you, but I would, what I would probably do about this is to make some of these, make some of these um, variables into, into attributes, uh, member variables. Um, and I did make one, but one, um, Refactoring, Let, let's see. Um, if I undo it, let me just undo it. And we can find, let's see, see BS. I, I, I'll bet some of you can get, guess what it actually is, but it's block size. And I can do the other refactoring, the, the, the one that I didn't make myself. Uh, if I can make this work, I can rename the variable so we can understand what it means. And then I could, I'm, I'm just gonna show you this. It doesn't work properly, but let's see, it just, it generates a moose attribute, which is not useful since this is not a moose, uh, it's not based on moose, but it could easily be done uh, uh, slightly differently. So now, what did I do? I got, um, instead of block size, I got this. And if I wanted to, it doesn't work perfectly, but I can show you the principle. So now if I go back and do uh, check other consistency, Uh, so now there's one less argument to this method. That kind of thing is useful to be able to do. And we could, uh, I, I often, or I generally search for the variables, see where they occur. So this one, header mode, um, it's concentrated here. So maybe I'd want to extract this as well. So I could use just the method instead of the variable. Okay, just one minute. Well, this shows a little bit of the, uh, um, it's not finished. <laughs> it shows a little bit of the, um, cosmetic problem with the, the way I'm doing it. I have to uh, convert variables back and forth to, or, or make references in order to um, pass them into and out of the method.